Hey, what is going on, YouTube? Hey, Aaron here. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. And guys, we have a special one for you guys here today. The Grossaka first. The most forgotten about legendary tier battleship. I remember when this ship first came out. This was one of the first three original legendary tier ships that was going to come to the game. This, the Yamato, and the Alaska. And we're going to talk a lot about that. But first, I want to go over our specific commander build. You guys mentioned that you want to see the commander and, you know, kind of the attributes of certain specific ships in the beginning of the video. Now, I'm actually not 100% sure the build I was running uh, in this particular game, but we have a pretty fun replay for you guys, and it shows you that being aggressive in the right set of circumstances can absolutely pay huge in terms of overall battle, uh, you know, being effective in battle. I know that a lot of people like to YOLO with their German battleships, and they, to be quite honest, they do it rather poorly. They just press W or press A or X on the worst console. They go forward and they, they're they not paying attention to situational awareness or anything. But this is the build we were running or we would run. Um, I switched up Brawler. I don't think losing that much for your main battery range and also decreasing that fire chance. That's one of those ones that's gotta be, you, you have to make that decision for yourself. But of course we are running Miss Azure Lane Bismarck and all of her features, I will say. And this is honestly, again, there's a few things you could definitely trade out in this spot but the build that I have right now on the screen is, is probably the one that I, I'm going to stick with. And of course, our inspirations are Mr. Hipper as well as Haruna. Now, if you don't have, if you're trying to run a completely, um, you know, not pay to win as most of the commanders are, and you have to run a completely free build, we go over that as well. And I would definitely choose Auto Ciliax. He has, the, the main perk you're looking for is Porcupine there in the second slot. Uh, Von Hipper is a good inspiration or a good commander, um, but he's more for the sniping brawling. And to be quite honest, the GK, even though of course it has, it's the 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 sister or what would have been the Bismarck at legendary tier, she has pretty decent guns. Um, and here's of course Franz Von Hipper in the build that we're running or would run uh, if we were to choose him. But um, I still think she does better with secondaries and a little bit of survivability. But if you are running completely free to play, auto silly, I, did I? Did I say Ciliax? Auto Ciliax is definitely the, the choice that, that I would take. Um, and these are the specific perks that I would run. Like we mentioned, Porcupine in the second you know slot there is going to be the most desired trait uh, in terms of secondaries. But these are the commanders that I would run if you are free to play. You have a choice between two pretty good commanders and of course the pay to wins as... The, nothing's ever really pay to win in this game, but the pay to win commanders as they're so-called are going to be much better. Here are the modules and modifications. We are running uh, secondaries in slot one, propulsion always in slot two, concealment in slot three. And I was actually mistaken, I believe, because in the game we have the epic secondary mod, but I selected the legendary reload mod by mistake. But here, while I was recording, I realized I made this mistake. So we go ahead and uninstall that uh, and uh, put on just a regular secondary mod. But in the game, uh, just keep in mind, it was an epic. And now to kind of talk about the Grossa Kerr first. Oh, one final point. I don't run the 420s. Yes, they have a different gun sound and do a tiny bit more damage with a little bit better fire chance, but the reload you lose, you don't gain any additional overmatch with the 420s, to my knowledge. I'm sure there's like one unique ship out there. I don't think there is, but um, you don't gain any additional overmatch and you lose that reload. Now, it's really not that much of a difference. I think it goes from 32 seconds for the 420s to 30 seconds with the 406s, but I just truly prefer the 406s. You get a little bit more DPM and to me, with how inaccurate these shells can be, I'd rather have that reload than potentially doing more damage on one, you know, very lucky shot. And that brings me to kind of the roundabout point that I was talking in the talking about in the beginning of this video. The GK is one of the most forgotten ships because Wargaming refuses to adjust or, you know, buff ships. And I think the GK could use a massive buff. Also, this ship was pretty much been a disappointment from her release. I'm not saying you can't get good games in this ship, but the amount of good games you get, and people use damage and kills as a metric of whether or not a ship is good. They use personal anecdotes instead of objectivity. And the amount of HP in the superstructure in the ship alone, I believe Durka or somebody asked or figured out, and it's like 60,000 damage or 60,000 HP worth of damage. You can see the armor scheme here in the armor viewer and this thing should be one of the most 
tanky armored beasts in the game. However, she's a thousand meters long. You have to get into secondary range if you want to get those secondaries. Specking into main guns is something that has been done before, but there are just so many better ships to accomplish every goal that you could possibly want to accomplish in the Kerfurst. And for example, the Schlieffen was released and basically just the, the, the Kerfurst was completely forgotten about. And I don't know what the Wargaming nerf and balance department is doing, but they are certainly not looking at the overall balance of the game because while yes, you can have good games in the Kerfurst and we do have fun games as we are about to watch here, she has just been power crept into oblivion. But let's go ahead and talk about this specific game right here. And this is a little bit of a unique one. We did have some fantastic players on our team in this game. Mr. Dilemma and Mr. Negan IQ are both excellent players. And I saw them in this game and I said, you know what? We're going to do what the GK was designed to do. Now, this is a very unique situation, just as playing, I believe, the Pan-Asian Cruisers is as well. For the Pan-Asian Cruisers, you know that you have those long-range deep-water torpedoes, smokescreen, and fast-firing light-caliber guns. And you need a team to push you aggressively in order for those Pan-Asian ships to truly be effective. If you are always chasing somebody, you cannot use your concealment, you cannot use those deep water torpedoes, and basically one third of your overall utility in you know those specific lines of ships is you are not able to use it. And the same goes for these ships. If you are not able to find a team that is going to sit in one spot and allow you to use your secondaries, angle your armor, and use your main guns, then chasing or kiting in these ships is truly ineffective. And people don't realize that. They YOLO rush in, not only in German ships, but in many different ships overall. And they just waste 100, you can see it, 95,000 health in three minutes and it's truly astonishing to me how fast some people can die in these ships. Now I know I said that we were rather aggressive in this game and you can see that we are turning out initially. Well, I think this is a good play. Why? It is epicenter. We have a few cruisers uh, you can see with us and ships already and a destroyer already in the epicenter. It is absolutely essential to get those caps. So what we're going to do in this situation is we are going to get a flank. We spawned out here on the left. So what we're going to do is hold the left side. And instead of doing like every other German battleship main, I love when I see, if you guys remember Wildery build and how kind of insanely broken it was. People would post screenshots of their triple Bismarck divisions with their Wildery build and they'd post and listen, we're all allowed to have fun in different games, but they'd post like 70k with like 100 secondary hits and they'd be like, the Bismarck is so broken! Oh, it's just funny because, yes, if you abuse a triple division of players with a busted game mechanic and a feature which you don't really have to control the aiming in terms of the secondaries, then yes, the, the ship may be broken against the average player in this game but when you have to utilize a little bit of strategy positioning and just thinking and iq points then you know these ships are probably a lot more difficult to play than most people have patience for but as we mentioned we're going to go out here on the flank and we're going to assess the situation right now we only see one Kerr first we were spotted however which tells us that there was a destroyer in the area you can also see that the outer ring or the middle ring rather is not being captured despite one of our destroyers being on the inside there which tells us there's at least one destroyer or ship it doesn't look like any of the other spotted ships are in that ring and right on time we get a set of torpedoes now because they were widespread and we dodged them and they also ran out we can assume one of two things the only two destroyers in the game on the enemy team are a gearing and a shimakaze the gearing as we know has 15 or 16 kilometer torpedoes and with gleaves and other builds they can be even longer so i'm guessing that the shimakaze was the one who launched those torpedoes but at this point in the game and i think on stream i said you know what I'm just going to send it. We do have our hydroacoustic search, but instead of wasting it, I want to wait for an opportunity to where we can apply it correctly. Meaning we have the Shima smoked up or we know he's in a certain, you know, by a certain island. Players will just pop that hydro for no reason. And unfortunately, it only lasts for six se or 60 seconds. Speaking about buffs and different things, a quick buff that Wargaming could do and, and probably not affect the battle impact, which is what they look at. They look at their unique spreadsheets with, you know, proprietary information. But a quick buff that I can tell you right now I think would make the ship immediately better 
is adding some time to that hydro. 60 seconds is not a lot of time considering how non-maneuverable this ship is. And as you can see, I've kind of caught myself in this position here. We know that there's a destroyer in front of us, and then all of a sudden, all of these ships come in view. And that is when we notice that the Shimakaze has kind of gone towards the middle of the map, and the destroyer, the gearing, is actually spotted on the west side there. So we know that we are actually safe from torpedoes in this situation. And I say, let's full send. That is when our secondaries start going off. And this is when the Kerfurst is in her natural habitat. This is when she is the most effective. We have both sides of secondaries going off. We are angled to what is four targets and there are no destroyers. I guess close to us, there was one 14 kilometers away who could be making his way back, but we do have our Hydro. So this is pretty much every German battleship main's dream. However, you will see very quickly here why the Kerfurst is just, she's just not it. And I know some people are going to disagree with me. They're going to say, well, the, the Kerfurst, I had a good game once. But as you can see there, I, th I think that Sava was even HE. We lost 10k to the front. I don't know whether it was penetration damage to the armor with HE or superstructure damage, but we haven't even been set on fire yet, and we are just leeching HP. And I feel like this is going to be a similar fate for the Vermont. I suffered a few times, uh, you know, just kind of getting chunk damage. It does have good armor, but I think that the Kerfurst has better armor than the Vermont, and I still feel like it just doesn't react how it should. Now, here is definitely a target of missed opportunity that Giuseppe went dark for a little bit. I took a Savo at that broadside, I think it was a Kerfurst behind the Montana there, and while we did get some a decent chunk Having a Giuseppe broadside at four kilometers is a much better target than, you know, the eventual damage or whatever damage we got to that curve first out there. But again, watch how much health we have and how much health disappears very quickly as we get a very mediocre salvo. We did lose a turret uh, to the Montana or the GK, so we were only down to one turret, but only one of those three shells hit at four kilometers, and that is the plight of every brawling battleship. Now, we are not losing too much health in this specific situation, and truthfully, I should have just stayed angled. However, we are continually pushing in here, and that Kerfurst would eventually have gotten on our broadside, but I wanted to get all guns on target just to have 50% of them hit at 4 kilometers, and there was the salvo. We do get two citadels, a nice, uh, a few nice secondary hits on that Giuseppe. We missed almost half of our shells, I can imagine, and we would have been killed by the torpedoes from the Palmer as we tick the high caliber, but we actually get killed by the Giuseppe instead. A very decent game in the Kerfurst. As you can see, we still have a fire ticking. 200 secondary hits, 6 fires in that short amount of time. 2 citadels for what equates or finishes at, I think, 180 or something like that. 180,000 damage. But if you'll notice, the game has barely hit the halfway mark, and we were one of the first battleships to die. Now, our team has excellent cap control, and with the players on our team in this game, both Mr. Dilemma and Mr. Negan IQ, I know I knew that we were going to win this game. I don't have the final screenshot, but I think we finished second or third with like 22, 2100 XP. That being said, I truthfully don't think this is the most effective way to play battleships. Yes, we did create a huge distraction for four enemy ships and we did a bunch of damage and again if you're playing this game pretty casually i would respect most people playing this way however it rarely works out like this most people just go down in a heap <laughs> with sixty thousand damage and considering that you just threw away ninety five thousand hp in a couple seconds yeah but we lost a good chunk. I'm going to go ahead and put it on replay here. We lost, we went from like, what, 60,000 to 15,000. And I don't think we got citadeled. With the way the armor scheme is set up, you should not be able to get citadeled, especially up close with how turtleback armor works. And yeah, as you can see it once again, as I put the replay here, losing 50,000 HP in one salvo is usually not going to be on the plus side for your team. We did distract four ships though and did dish out a decent amount of damage and we had a little bit of fun in the process. So I guess, you know, if that's your objective, then go for it. I just, I wish that this ship could be so much more and especially with ships like the Schlieffen, all of the German battle cruisers having much better secondaries and arguably even better armor. Um, the, the GK just feels like it's been left in the dust. So I don't know what the balancing department is waiting on. As we mentioned in previous videos, there's only been like one or two balancing changes since November uh, or even longer. I don't even know at this point. Um, and, and those are actually kind of 
what makes the game a little bit less stale. Of course, new content, new ships, new maps, etc. But switching up those ships, which have been dog shit for so long, and this is one of them, I know that's going to upset like the three GK lovers out there, but the ships that have just been truly bad for a while or have been power crept that need a you know balancing makes the game fun again because a lot of players just take out the same comfort ship but if you kind of make one of those ships or or those ships that have been weak for so long stronger and i know wargaming has their balancing sheets and the battle impact but man it's <laughs> I, I, I get the plight. You can't make ships overpowered, and it's very difficult to find balance with a very complex game like this. But yeah, I, I just think the way they're doing it is a little bit slow, in my opinion. But that's my thoughts, my opinions. Let me know with all the comments down below. I do, I say some things sometimes just to get you guys in the comments. But uh, that's all for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. A run out. Peace.